There's a saying that politicians wage war and the commoners fight it. King Albert I of Belgium, however, was the exception to the rule. When Germany replied to his moral stand by invading Belgium, Albert himself took command of the defense lines and regained his country by fighting from the front. Today, Nutty History brings you the story of a monarch who led the troops on the battlefield during the First World War to help save the freedom of his nation. Before we charge into battle, though, hit subscribe and the bell for more incredible stories throughout history. Albert became the King of Belgium in 1909. Only a few years later, the Great War engulfed nearly all of Europe. During his early, rather peaceful years, King Albert and his wife Elizabeth established themselves as a good, moral, and happy royal family who cared for the masses of their nation. But the main factor contributing to Albert's popularity was his benevolence as a ruler. His wife, the Queen, also actively participated and encouraged charitable programs and causes from the royal residents, gaining approval and admiration from the entire nation. When the Germans declared war on France, the German king sought passage to France through Belgium. But King Albert wasn't about to allow German troops to march through his territory. He refused. Infuriated, the German emperor instead annexed Belgium just a day later. The Belgians were caught off guard and hit hard. And though they were no match for Germany's massive army, the Belgians still offered outstanding resistance from a defiant population and stubborn snipers in every town Germany invaded. Germany responded to this incredible display of defiance in the worst way, killing civilians, as well as prisoners of war, burning towns, and destroying historical landmarks. In a hugely unprecedented move, King Albert joined the Belgian troops on the defense lines and led his country's defiance from the front. The siege of Antwerp was King Albert's first challenge. It was the most fortified city in Belgium, and Albert knew that it must be protected for as long as possible. The Germans were bombarding the city, surrounding forts with some of the largest artillery shells the world had ever seen. But Albert surprised the German army by frequently sending raiding parties to the south. These unexpected attacks severely disrupted Germany's plan to invade France, and their focus turned to providing more reinforcements in Belgium. The Belgians and their allies ultimately had to retreat, but they held the Germans at Antwerp long enough to make a second front at the Isere River. This was the last remaining westernmost sliver of Belgium. King Albert and the rest of the Belgians put up a heroic display of defense at the Battle of Isir. The Isir River and the towns along it were the last of the standing Belgian territory, and Belgium paid the price of resistance with a high number of casualties. Germany was constantly attacking, and after a few weeks, the Belgians and French resolved to flood parts of the river to create a more impenetrable barrier. This halted Germany for good. They were forced to settle into trench warfare, creating what was known as the Isir Front. King Albert made the tough choice to set up the Belgian government under Charles de Broqueville in France to work in exile. But Albert himself remained at the front for the remainder of the war. While the king led his army in the battles, Queen Elizabeth took command of the hospitals and donation collections. She managed a nursing unit and served as a nurse herself. Elizabeth was of German descent but her service and patriotism for Belgium never let anybody among the troops and people doubt her. In fact, wherever she visited the soldiers, they cheered and loved her presence. Prince Leopold, who would become king after Albert, was only 14 at the start of the war. But with permission from his father, he served as a private till the war ended. I'll hug you now. <laughs> Wait, Dad, what? Belgium was brought to the brink in the First World War, but Albert never gave up on his country. He did everything to secure peace, but when that failed, he led his troops to regain his country back at the end of the Great War. Albert worked hard to rebuild Belgium from the ground up. He fought against racism and segregation in his country and advocated for fair justice for all across the globe. For Belgium, he is remembered as not only a king, but a national hero. What do you think? If you were king, would you have rushed into battle like Albert did? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe 
for more harrowing and heroic tales from Nutty History.